Hi you guys, I'd like to read to you today from A.W. Towser's book, The Crucified Life. Um, it's actually a chapter 3, I believe, about the resurrection. And I'm just going to touch on a few key points here that are really, really powerful and I hope it encourages you and just strengthens you and motivates you on your walk, um, especially this Resurrection Sunday coming up. So, the title of it is called The Reason for Everything about the resurrection and the verse of this chapter was then if ye then be risen with Christ seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God set your affection on the things above not on the things of the earth for ye are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God amen what a beautiful powerful scripture you know it's it's saying like since Christ is risen then we are called to seek those things which are above, not the things on below, not the things of the world, not the things of the earth, or what the world has to offer and its its passing treasures and pleasures. They're all they're all going to perish, but everything built upon the rock, which is the word of God, shall stand forever, and be from everlasting unto everlasting. You know, Christ sitteth on the right hand of God in all of His authority power and might and strength that's what Christ is the Son of God and set your affection on the things above not on things on the earth for ye are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God amen so right there it's saying you are dead any so if you're a Christian you are dead you are dead to this life you are dead to your flesh you are dead to the ways of the world that's why we're called to crucify ourselves to this world and everything that it has to offer, all of its pleasures and desires and fleeting temporal gratifications are nothing but a pile of fiction, corporate fiction, nonsense. It is a passing by. It, it will not gratify your soul. It will not give you true joy. It will not give you true contentment in life. If you want true contentment in life, then seek Jesus Christ. Seek his face. Read his word daily. It will fill you with, with living water that will just burst forth from your inner being because God will just be overfilling your cup with His anointing, with His living water and His power and His kingdom to come on earth shall it be done. His will. Amen. All right. So let's just um, read this real quick. It's called The Reason for Everything. Christ triumph over death, the foundation and fountain of our faith, was everything to the early enraptured believers. Christ rising from the dead was first an amazing thing. Then it became a joyful wonder, and then a radiance of conviction supported by many infallible proofs witnessed by the Holy Ghost. This became to the first Christians the reason for everything. The battle cry of those early Christians was, He is risen! And it became to them outright courage in the first 200 years Hundreds of thousands of Christians died as martyrs. To those early Christians, Easter was not a holiday or even a holy day. It was not a day at all. It was an accomplished fact that lived with them all year long. Amen. Wow, what a, what a glorious thing. It was like they celebrated Christ is risen every single day all year long. They didn't just wait for one day out of the year or they didn't wait for one day out of the week. They celebrated Christ every day by knowing He is risen, by being risen with Christ and in Christ, dead to the world. Amen? So, let's read on here. It says, He lives. It was an accomplished fact that lived with them all year long and became the reason for their daily conduct. He lives, they said, and we live. He was triumphant, and in Him we are triumphant. He is with us and leads us, and we follow Him. Amen. They turned their faces toward an altogether new life because Christ was raised from the dead. They did not celebrate his rising from the dead and then go back to their everyday lives and wait for another year to pull them up from out of the mud again. They lived by the fact that Christ had risen from the dead and they had risen with him. If ye then be risen with Christ, that word if is not an if of uncertainty, okay? The force of the word is since ye are the, then risen with Christ. Okay, so since you are then risen with Christ. Paul declared in Romans 6, 4. Ephesians 
2, 6 through 7. So let's look that up really quick. Romans 6, 4 and Ephesians 2, 6 through 7. Okay, here's Romans 6, 4. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. Okay, so if we are baptized with Christ, you know, dead to this world, we should be walking in a new man. Behold, old things have passed away. All things have become new. 2 Corinthians 5.17 So, uh, also right here while we're in Romans chapter 6, look at verse 8. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Okay, even though we're living in this world, we're not supposed to be of it. We are in it, but not of it. Okay? Now, knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more, death hath no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once, but in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead unto sin, but alive unto God through Christ Jesus our Lord. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey it and the lust thereof. Neither yield your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. What then shall we say, because we are not under the law, but under grace? that we shall sin God forbid know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey his servants ye are to whom ye obey whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness but God be thanked that ye were servants of sin but ye have obeyed from the heart that from that form of doctrine which was delivered you being then made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as ye have yielded your members servants to uncleanliness and to iniquity, un unto iniquity, even so now yield your members servants to righteousness, unto holiness. For when ye were the servants of sin, ye were free from righteousness. But what fruit had ye then in those things thereof? Ye are now ashamed. For the end of those things is death. But now, being made free from sin and become servants to God, ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end of everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of Jesus Christ of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And Ephesians 2, 6 through 7 real quick. And hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show his exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. For by grace ye are saved through faith, and not of yourselves it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Amen. Beautiful verses there. Now let's get back into this scripture here and see what Tows are saying. Okay. And elsewhere that when Christ rose from the dead, his people rose with him. Mortality rose with him. Spirituality rose with him. And this rising from the dead was and is an accomplished fact. The treasures of heaven. What does Paul mean when he talks about those things which are above? This is not some broad generalization as it may sound. They can be identified. We may draw a line down the middle of a page and over on the left hand side put all the things that are on the earth and over on the right hand side all the things that are of heaven the things that are of the earth belong to sight reason and our senses the things that are in heaven belong to faith trust and confidence in God over on the left hand side we put pleasures of the earth and over on the right hand side we'll put delight in the Lord on the left we put treasures of the earth on the right we put treasures where neither moth nor rust nor rust doth corrupt and where thieves do not break in and steal Matthew 6:20 On the left we put reputation among men and our desire to stand well with men and on the right we will put our desire to stand high with God 
Over on the left, we'll put a rich dwelling over, place. Over on the right, we'll put a mansion above. On the left, we put a desire to walk with the best company here below on earth. But on the right, we put a desire to walk with God and God's people. On the left, we put following man's philosophy and on the right, following God's revelations. On the left, cultivating the flesh. On the right, living for the spirit. On the left, to live for a time. And on the right, to live for eternity. Amen. So right here, Towser is just outlining the difference between walking in the flesh and walking in the spirit. You know, what? where's your mind at? Where's your, your um, heart at? Because the Bible says where your treasures are, there your heart will be also. So if our treasures are in the earth or in the world, then that means our heart will be married to the world. We're not called to be married to the world. We're called to stop playing the harlot with the world and be crucified to the world and to be married to Jesus Christ, our, our husband and our bridegroom, and um, to you know walk in fellowship with him and the Father and the Holy Spirit constantly praying without ceasing. And um, you know we really have to make sure that we're storing up our treasures in heaven and not on the earth, you know? Um, because we can't take these things with us and we don't know how long we have here, you know? The Lord may require our soul tonight, and then what do we have to show for it, you know? Make sure that you're storing up your treasures in heaven, not on earth, okay? If you store up your treasures in heaven, then God will take care of you here on this earth. He will provide for you. You do not have to worry. You do not have to fear. Um, the Lord is our provider, and he said, don't be anxious for anything. With all things by prayer and supplication, make your request known to God, okay? So we can see how different things are for Christians from the world, and... On the left, you have all the pleasures of the earth and the treasures of the earth that you want, a good reputation among men and a rich dwelling place, but they make you want to um, walk with uh, the best company of men and to follow man's philosophies, but the things that are of God make our faith, trust, and confidence in God and make us delight in the Lord and value the treasures that are above. They want us to stand high with God in a mansion in heaven, to walk with God below and follow God's revela revelation. And to live for the soul and for eternity. Amen. Live for eternity. Don't live for this life, but it's, it's just a passing vapor. Okay. Set your sight and affection on things above. Christ sits on the right hand of God. This is the heart and truth of the scriptures. The scriptures teach us that Christ is out of the grave, alive forevermore, constantly present for those who have faith. He gathers his people wherever they meet, anytime they meet. Okay, whether you're in a cave or you're hiding from persecution, anywhere you're at, Jesus Christ gathers there among his people and they minister to the Lord and pray. So the Lord, so the church of Christ lives because Christ lives and it does not depend on seasons of the year. Amen. Christ is out of the grave and we and will never be back in that grave again. Death has no domin more dominion over him. Therefore, because he is risen from the grave, we too are to be risen with him and to seek those things that are above. And to seek and set our affections on things above, to put off the old ways and forgive anybody in the world and dedicate your time to God. Too often we give God only the tired remnants of our time. If Jesus Christ had given us only the remnant of his time, we would all be on our way to darkness that knows no morning, hell. But Christ gave us not the tattered leftovers of his time. He gave us all the time he had. But some of us give him only the leftovers of our time and our money or our talents and never give our time fully to the Lord Jesus Christ who gave us all because he gave us his all we have what we have and he calls us as he is so are we in this world amen come to Jesus Christ just as you are don't wait until you get clean before you come to him just come to him if you're struggling with addictions or sins or lust the flesh or the eyes anything that you're struggling with just come to Jesus Christ with it Lay it all down. Confess your sins to God. He is just and faithful to forgive you and to cleanse you of all unrighteousness. Amen. Amen. Praise God. All right, you guys. That's pretty much it. And um, I hope that encouraged you and just, you know, made you focus and think about where your treasures are. And um, that doesn't mean that you can't have a job, you know, or, you know, want to buy a house, all those things. But just do those things unto the Lord. You know, when you're at work, do it unto the Lord. Don't do it unto yourself or to try to gain wealth. Do it unto the Lord. Do all things unto the Lord for his glory in remembrance of him. For he is the one that we serve in this life. Amen. God bless you guys. And take care.